The floor of the carpal tunnel is formed by the carpal bones. The roof is the transverse carpal ligament, which has four points of attachment onto the carpal bones. On the radial side, it's the scaphoid tubercle and the trapezium, and on the alga side, the pisiform and the hook of the hamate. Arising from the transverse carpal ligament are two main muscle groups, the thena and hypothena muscles. There's also one more muscle to add in, palmaris brevis. This runs from the transverse carpal ligament and palmar aponeurosis to the skin on the ulnar border of the hand. It's a muscle you'll often see during your approach. While we're here, let's go over the difference between the transverse carpal ligament and the flexor retinaculum. They're often used interchangeably and that can be confusing. The transverse carpal ligament we can see here with our four attachments as described. The flexor retinaculum, however, is a larger structure which actually incorporates the transverse carpal ligament. It has three main parts. The distal portion is an aponeurosis between the thena and the hypothena muscles. The thick central portion is the bit that we're interested in for our carpal tunnel release and is the transverse carpal ligament. The proximal part of the flexor retinaculum is continuous with the deep investing fascia of the forearm. Now that we've defined the tunnel, let's look at what goes through it. It contains the four tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis, and the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus, and of course, the median nerve. There are a few other structures around here, so to hopefully avoid any future confusion, let's put them in so that we know where they are. The first one we'll add is the flexor carpi radialis. Now this actually runs between superficial and deep layers of the transverse carpal ligament, sitting in this oblique groove of the trapezium, and therefore does not pass through the carpal tunnel. Neither does the flexor carpi ulnaris, which inserts into the pisiform proximal and superficial to the carpal tunnel. The last tendon we'll look at is palmaris longus. This inserts onto the central part of the transverse carpal ligament and becomes continuous with the palmar aponeurosis. The tendon is absent in about 15% of Caucasians, but this can vary with other races. It's also worth mentioning that it can be confused with the median nerve, especially if palmaris longus is absent. The median nerve is the real reason we're here, so let's look at that for a bit. It sits slightly radial in the carpal tunnel and gives off two branches that we need to know about. The palmar cutaneous branch, which supplies sensation to the skin at the base of the thena eminence, and the recurrent motor branch, which innervates the thena muscle. 